How to play guitar chords if you think your fingers are too short or too fat. I've uploaded this lesson in response to lots of people who have asked me this question and rather than trying to answer in text over and over again I thought it would be easier if I made a video then I can upload it and refer people to it when they have this question. And it would be a good idea if you can to have a guitar on your lap whilst you're watching this video and then you can experiment with some of the ideas I'm going to give you. So let's get on with the lesson. Issue 1. The thumb position. Without doubt the most common issue that causes people to come to me and say they can't reach the chords is the thumb position. To demonstrate this you'll notice I've got the camera just on the front of the fretboard and on the back of the neck so I can show you where the thumb is as I play things. And the first thing I'll play is literally just one note at a time from the second fret. So I'm playing fret 2, 3, 4 and 5 with the first, second, third and fourth finger. And I'm playing this on the top E string. And as I play the notes, I'm leaving the fingers in place. So it looks like this. Now, to exaggerate a point and to demonstrate how your reach can be minimized by the position of the thumb, I'm going to bring the thumb right round the guitar now. And then I'm going to try and put my fingers in the 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th fret again. And you can see it's very difficult or nearly impossible. And this isn't me play acting. If you've got a guitar on your knee, try playing each fret from the 2nd fret to the 5th fret without removing them and with your thumb around the neck of the guitar. You'll find it nearly impossible to play. Now. If I bring the thumb back around this guitar towards the floor, I can make that stretch easily. So hopefully this clearly demonstrates the importance of the thumb position. And hopefully with some of you it solved the problem with reach. And if you were to try this same exercise on the bottom E string, it demonstrates even more how you need to have the thumb in the right position in order to get the reach. Now, to practice this and improve it, and improve your reach, I really recommend you practice your scales. Even if you only want to play chords, the importance of scales to get your fingers moving correctly, and to get you holding the guitar correctly, can't be understated. So, I'd recommend the G major scale, and just practice this, using your thumb around the neck, and trying to keep your fingers on on each string. Here's a demonstration of what I mean and I'm using the diatonic or two octave G major scale. And I'll just demonstrate what I mean by this. Now this is the G major scale and if you don't know it I'll put a link down below in the description so you can learn just this scale. Now if I play it normally you'd expect me to remove the fingers as I play them but in order to develop stretch what I'll do is I'll play the first note and then I'll play the second note leaving the first note in place. Then I'll remove the fingers to go to the next string and on this string I'll play the first note and then play the second note keeping the first finger in place and then play the third note keeping both the first and the second note in place. And I'll continue like this. And obviously as you're doing this it's important to use the correct fingers. If
if you have to move your thumb as you're going through the scale, don't worry about it. This can actually be a really good thing because in contemporary music, your thumb can be anywhere at any point and some guitarists will actually bring the thumb right around the neck to fret bass notes. So the ability to move your thumb from one position to another is a real advantage. Another important thing I need to point out about the position of the thumb is that it should always be behind the fingers. So if your thumb is drifting away down the neck or up the neck, bring it back behind the fingers. With the thumb positioning, it's different for everyone. And it does to some degree depend on the size and the shape of your hand. So play around with the thumb positioning until you find the way that gives you best reach. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the most comfortable. Quite often, to get the best reach, you have to go through a stage of discomfort as your tendons stretch and as your hand gets used to the new way of playing the guitar. Before we move on, I'll just demonstrate the same trick with the G7 chord, because I've been asked about this chord in particular. And if I played the G7 chord with my thumb around the neck, I nearly can't stretch, it's really hard. However, if I drop my thumb round towards the floor, it becomes a lot easier to stretch across the strings. Hopefully, this has already solved the problems people are having playing chords. Issue 2. The angle of your fingers. A second common issue I see when people can't reach the chords or their scales is the angle of the fingers. And to get perfect stretch, your fingers should be angled at 90 degrees to the neck or at 6 o'clock, so that they're pointing straight up. And without realising, people tend to rotate their hands so that their fingers are attacking the guitar at an angle, and therefore they're making it more difficult for themselves in attaining a good reach. But it's also true that with certain chords, you do need to have your fingers at a specific angle to get best results out of the chord and you might have to experiment with this also. Now, the finger angle is one of these things that does make your hand feel uncomfortable. In the perfect hold, you'll find that your hand feels really out of place and it doesn't feel natural at all. But if you force yourself to do it, you'll eventually get used to it. Or you'll find a place that's somewhere between technically perfect and absolutely slobby that is perfect for yourself. And this is the joy of contemporary music is you don't have to follow those exact classical rules. You can bend them slightly in order to suit your own style of play. However, for the time being, you do need to experiment with getting things as close to technically correct as you can, especially if you're having trouble reaching your chords or your scales. And to help you get this, I'll play the G major scale one more time so you can take a good look at where I'm putting my thumb and how I'm holding my fingers. Here's the G7 played correctly. Here's the G7 played incorrectly. Because I've been playing the guitar for a long time, and I've got long fingers, both chords sound more or less the same. However, if you're just starting the guitar, or you've got short fingers, using the fingers correctly can make the difference between the chord sounding correct and not being able to play the chord at all. A less common issue that can affect your chords. On your fingering hands, your nails should be short. And when you're fingering your chords and your scales, 
you should try to get your fingers as close as you can to being on tiptoes. And if your nails are too long, you won't be able to get onto tiptoes. And if you push hard to try and get the chord, they can also cause damage to the fingerboard of the guitar. Obviously, this only applies to your fingering hand, and it doesn't matter with your picking hand. In fact, you might find nails useful if you decide to take up finger style. but they can get in the way if you want to play heavy metal styles with techniques like tapping. Obviously, in the future, I'll be teaching these two styles and these two tunes. Issue 4. Your guitar. Now, if on your guitar the action is very high, and the action is the height of the strings above the fingerboard, then this can make it very hard for you to play the guitar. One of the most obvious problems is, when you press down on the strings, there's a lot more distance for you to have to push the strings before it makes contact with the frets. And when you're first learning, this can cause your fingers to get very sore very quickly. A second issue with a high action is that when you push down on one string that's between two other strings, because of the extra height between the string and the fret contact, your fingers have to be extra straight to avoid contact with the other surrounding strings, which will cause those notes to mute. With a lower action, you're far less likely to touch the strings next to the string you're trying to fret, making the guitar a lot easier to play. Another very important thing to consider is the size of the guitar. And you really shouldn't have a guitar that's too big for you. I once had an eight-year-old turn up for lessons with a full-size dreadnought and the person in the music shop had told the parent, oh, they'll grow into it, which is really stupid. I don't like playing a full-size dreadnought and I'm six foot two. So, if you're small, you should play an appropriately sized guitar. And if you've got a big guitar, you should put it away until you're big enough to play it. And this could make the difference between you playing the guitar and just giving up after a few weeks. So it really is important to have the right guitar. Cheats You shouldn't be afraid of, and you shouldn't be ashamed of using cheats. Some of the best guitarists in the world have used them. And as long as the tune sounds the same, and it doesn't sound wrong, go ahead with it. And to give you an example, one of the most common cheats I use is to cover two strings with one finger. And to demonstrate that, here I'm doing it with an E minor. And you can see I'm putting my first finger on both the A string and the D string at the same time. Now, some people with very narrow fingertips might not be able to do this, but the vast majority of people will. And if you put the finger straight down and it doesn't cover both the strings, you can just let it flop down just a little, just enough to cover two strings without catching any of the other strings. Now, you can also do this with different fingers on different strings. So as another example, here's an A minor, where I'm playing the D and the G string with my second finger and I'm playing the B string only with my first finger. Now, remember, 
This technique is supposed to be a cheat. And really, it's more useful for people with wider fingers who are ending up catching other strings that they don't want to catch. However, if you play the chord correctly, more easily or as easily as this, stick with that. There's no point changing. If you're having trouble playing the chords correctly, it's worth looking at this technique because it can actually improve your guitar playing quite a lot. Now, in this video, all I've done is looked at one or two ways to get chords that you can't get and given you some brief examples. However, the rest is down to you and a little bit of common sense. With any chords that you can't play or you're having difficulty with, you need to play around with the fingering and thumb position, etc. until you can get it right. And even if it feels horrible, stick with it and it will become more natural as you practice it. But remember, at the end of the day, the most important thing you can do is actually practice. And through practice, you can conquer anything that you think you can't play. And I guaranteed that because I've seen it so many times. Hopefully, I've covered most of the issues you might come across. However, the main thing to come away with from this video is to actually look at your hand, move your thumb around and move the angle of the fingers until you can reach the chord correctly. And then try to remember the thumb position and the finger angle for the next time you come across that chord and practice it that way. Even if it feels uncomfortable and all natural at first, keep practicing and eventually you'll fall into it and it'll become quite natural and you'll do it automatically. Okay, I really hope that's helped you. And thank you very much for watching this video. And if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe because it does help the channel to grow. And if you want to go straight away to some more lessons, visit the website www.ebooksforguitar.com and all my YouTube lessons are there, free of charge for you to look at and you can view the ebooks online for free. And on the website you'll also find the G major scale that we discussed earlier. Thanks again for watching.